Convention, Number 87, Concerning Freedom of Association and Protection of the Right to Organize, done at San Francisco on the 9th of July 1948, entry into force, the 4th of July 1950. Preamble, the General Conference of the International Labor Organization, having been convened at San Francisco by the governing body of the International Labor Office, and having met in its 31st session on the 17th of June 1948, having decided to adopt, in the form of a convention, certain proposals concerning freedom of association and protection of the right to organize, which is the seventh item on the agenda of the session, considering that the preamble to the Constitution of the International Labor Organization declares recognition of the principle of freedom of association to be a means of improving conditions of labor and of establishing peace, considering that the Declaration of Philadelphia reaffirms that freedom of expression and of association are essential to sustained progress, considering that the International Labor Conference, at its 30th session, unanimously adopted the principles which should form the basis for international regulation, considering that the General Assembly of the United Nations, at its second session, endorsed these principles and requested the International Labor Organization to continue every effort in order that it may be possible to adopt one or several international conventions, adopts this ninth day of July of the year 1948 the following convention which may be cited as the Freedom of Association and Protection of the Right to Organize Convention, 1948. Part 1. Freedom of Association, Article 1. Each member of the International Labor Organization for which this convention is in force undertakes to give effect to the following provisions. Article 2. Workers and employers, without distinction whatsoever, shall have the right to establish and subject only to the rules of the organization concerned, to join organizations of their own choosing without previous authorization. Article 3. 1. Workers and employers' organizations shall have the right to draw up their constitutions and rules, to elect their representatives in full freedom, to organize their administration and activities and to formulate their programs. 2. The public authorities shall refrain from any interference which would restrict this right or impede the lawful exercise thereof. Article 4. Workers and employers' organizations shall not be liable to be dissolved or suspended by administrative authority. Article 5. Workers and employers' organizations shall have the right to establish and join federations and confederations and any such organization. Federation or Confederation shall have the right to affiliate with international organizations of workers and employers. Article 6. The provisions of Articles 2, 3 and 4 hereof apply to Federations and Confederations of Workers and Employers Organizations. Article 7. The acquisition of legal personality by workers and employers organizations, federations and confederations shall not be made subject to conditions of such a character as to restrict the application of the provisions of Articles 2, 3 and 4 hereof. Article 8. 1. In exercising the rights provided for in this convention workers and employers and their respective organizations, like other persons or organized collectivities, shall respect the law of the land. 2. The law of the land shall not be such as to impair, nor shall it be so applied as to impair, the guarantees provided for in this convention. Article 9. 1. The extent to which the guarantees provided for in this convention shall apply to the armed forces and the police shall be determined by national laws or regulations. 2. In accordance with the principle set forth in paragraph 8 of Article 19 of the Constitution of the International Labor Organization the ratification of this convention by any member shall not be deemed to affect any existing law, award, custom or agreement in virtue of which members of the armed forces or the police enjoy any right guaranteed by this convention. Article 10, in this convention the term organization means any organization of workers or of employers for furthering and defending the interests of workers or of employers. Part 2. Protection of the right to organize, Article 11, each member of the International Labor Organization for which this convention is in force undertakes to take all necessary and appropriate measures to ensure that workers and employers may exercise freely the right to organize.
Part 3. Miscellaneous Provisions, Article 12, 1. In respect of the territories referred to in Article 35 of the Constitution of the International Labour Organization as amended by the Constitution of the International Labour Organization Instrument of Amendment 1946, other than the territories referred to in paragraphs 4 and 5 of the said article is so amended, each member of the organization which ratifies this convention shall communicate to the Director General of the International Labor Office with or as soon as possible after its ratification a declaration stating, a. the territories in respect of which it undertakes that the provisions of the convention shall be applied without modification, b the territories in respect of which it undertakes that the provisions of the convention shall be applied subject to modifications, together with details of the said modifications. c. The territories in respect of which the convention is inapplicable and in such cases the grounds on which it is inapplicable. d. The territories in respect of which it reserves its decision. 2. The undertakings referred to in subparagraphs, a, and, b. Of paragraph 1 of this article shall be deemed to be an integral part of the ratification and shall have the force of ratification. 3. Any member may at any time by a subsequent declaration cancel in whole or in part any reservations made in its original declaration in virtue of subparagraphs B, C, or D of paragraph 1 of this article. 4. Any member may at any time at which the Convention is subject to denunciation in accordance with the provisions of Article 16, communicate to the Director General a declaration modifying in any other respect the terms of any former declaration and stating the present position in respect of such territories as it may specify. Article 13, 1. Where the subject matter of this Convention is within the self-governing powers of any non-metropolitan territory, the member responsible for the international relations of that territory may, in agreement with the government of the territory, communicate to the Director General of the International Labour Office a declaration accepting on behalf of the territory the obligations of this convention. 2. A declaration accepting the obligations of this convention may be communicated to the Director General of the International Labour Office. A by two or more members of the organization in respect of any territory which is under their joint authority, or, b, by any international authority responsible for the administration of any territory, in virtue of the Charter of the United Nations or otherwise, in respect of any such territory. 3. Declarations communicated to the Director General of the International Labour Office in accordance with the preceding paragraphs of this article shall indicate whether the provisions of the Convention will be applied in the territory concerned without modification or subject to modifications, when the Declaration indicates that the provisions of the Convention will be applied subject to modifications it shall give details of the said modifications. 4. The Member Members or international authority concerned may at any time by a subsequent declaration renounce in whole or in part the right to have recourse to any modification indicated in any former declaration. 5. The member, members or international authority concerned may, at any time at which this convention is subject to denunciation in accordance with the provisions of Article 16. Communicate to the Director General a declaration modifying in any other respect the terms of any former declaration and stating the present position in respect of the application of the Convention. Part 4. Final Provisions, Article 14. The formal ratifications of this Convention shall be communicated to the Director General of the International Labour Office for registration. Article 15. 1. This convention shall be binding only upon those members of the International Labour Organization whose ratifications have been registered with the Director General. 2. It shall come into force 12 months after the date on which the ratifications of two members have been registered with the Director General. 3. Thereafter, this convention shall come into force for any member 12 months after the date on which its ratifications has been registered. Article 16, 1. A member which has ratified this convention may denounce it after the expiration of ten years from the date on which the convention first comes into force, by an act communicated to the Director General of the International Labour Office for registration.
such denunciation shall not take effect until one year after the date on which it is registered. 2. Each member which has ratified this convention and which does not, within the year following the expiration of the period of ten years mentioned in the preceding paragraph, exercise the right of denunciation provided for in this article, will be bound for another period of ten years and, thereafter, may denounce this convention at the expiration of each period of ten years under the terms provided for in this article. Article 17, 1. The Director General of the International Labour Office shall notify all members of the International Labour Organization of the registration of all ratifications, declarations and denunciations communicated to him by the members of the organization. 2. When notifying the members of the organization of the registration of the second ratification communicated to him, the Director General shall draw the attention of the members of the organization to the date upon which the convention will come into force. Article 18 The Director General of the International Labour Office shall communicate to the Secretary General of the United Nations for registration in accordance with Article 102 of the Charter of the United Nations full particulars of all ratifications, declarations and acts of denunciation registered by him in accordance with the provisions of the preceding articles. Article 19 at such times as it may consider necessary the governing body of the International Labour Office shall present to the General Conference a report on the working of this convention and shall examine the desirability of placing on the agenda of the conference the question of its revision in whole or in part. Article 20, 1. Should the conference adopt a new convention revising this convention in whole or in part, then, unless the new convention otherwise provides, a. The ratification by a member of the new revising convention shall ipso jury involve the immediate denunciation of this convention, notwithstanding the provisions of Article 16 above, if and when the new revising convention shall have come into force. B. As from the date when the new revising convention comes into force this convention shall cease to be open to ratification by the members. 2. This convention shall in any case remain in force in its actual form and content for those members which have ratified it but have not ratified their revising convention. Article 21 The English and French versions of the text of this convention are equally authoritative.